Now let's get to some of the questions. Um, the first one came in uh, before the uh, before the webinar started, and it says it says how do you find time when we're wearing so many hats and doing so many different things to actually be creative? And that that honestly that ties in very much to what we're talking about today. That who's got an extra ten percent effort? Who's got an extra ten percent time to pour into your show when you're doing a million things? I, I talked to a um, personality last week who is the program director of a cluster, does music for two of those stations, is on the afternoon show on one of the stations, and has just been asked by the company to start voice tracking shows in three other markets. I found out last week about a personality who is voice tracking 37 shows every single day. How do you find time to be creative? How do you how do you do that? Well. First of all, you got to be super organized. Um, you, you've got to have a process. You've got to have a system in place that uh, that, that simplifies things. Um, so, how do you be creative? You 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 simply got to make time for it and and set aside that time, whether it's fifteen minutes a day or twenty minutes a day, thirty minutes a day, where you gather all of the information that you're you're planning, all the topics that you're planning for the show the next day and you just think about it you think about it you brainstorm it you uh you, you get out of your head i've got a show that is on until 10 o'clock every morning and really between 9 and 10 they play a lot more music and uh they they had been spending most of that time between 9 and 10 uh, on social media answering emails uh interacting with the promotions department talking to the program director doing a bunch of different things we reorganized their day. And I said, why don't you take some time after the show to do that? And while you've got the studio and you're there all by yourself and there's nobody else there, um, nobody else can bug you, you know, lock the studio door and make that your creative time. Now you've got an hour during that last hour of your show where you're playing some highlights from before, you're playing a lot of music and you're hosting you know, you know, you know, the intros of songs. You got an hour to really decompress and be creative for tomorrow uh, and get in that mindset. And I think that's gonna work for them very well. But you gotta find the time, you gotta make the time. Maybe it's getting up an extra half hour early to do it before you go into the station and all the all the activity uh, start, starts to pick up. So find the time and make it a part of your day. Uh, they say that about working out, that the if you can work out for, uh, some people say 12 days in a row, but, uh, 30 days in a row. If you can take the challenge of working out every day for 30 days, it becomes part of a new routine. So make the time to work out and you'll keep that habit. Make the time to find, to be creative and you will um, eventually uh, make that a guaranteed daily part of your, part of your routine. Uh, another uh, question came about, um, Finding a job in a tough radio job market um, said, I am still out of work. I was on your Get That Gig seminar a few months back. Uh, your advice was to start a website and a podcast. I've done that, but I'm having trouble getting anyone to pay attention to it. Uh, social media uh, discourages links to external sources, which I don't really understand. I'm not sure that's the case. Um, but question about how do I publicize? I'm still out of work and I'm struggling. Uh, what do I do here? Uh, hang in there. Uh, number one, uh, hang in there and make connections. Talk to people. Talk to people who can help you. Uh, find mentors, find champions, find people who like what you do and ask them to publicize your website, publicize that podcast. Um, don't get discouraged if you're not getting much traction. It takes time and it takes a lot of effort. Um, but um, you know, make connection. There's a there's a great group on Facebook called Radio Peeps, um, and it's a very supportive group of other radio personalities. And it's a great uh, community to make friends, make connections, and talk about what you're going through. Talk about the situation that you're in. Ask them questions. Get them to say, "Hey, if you know of anything, is there anything in your company? Is there anything in your in your group? Is there anything else in your market?" that you think I'd, uh, I'd fit for. Give them your, give them the, the links to your website. Um, there, there are some great resources on my site at tjohnsonmediagroup.com and at insidersradionetwork.com that you can check out. Uh, there's also an, 
a, we, we started a, a sideline a few, uh, well, about two years ago now for air check coaching, where if you want uh, my team to help you put your uh, presentation together, um, we will help you do that. We will coach you through that. Uh, we'll help you with your videos. We'll, we'll, we'll put all of that together for you. And we'll also uh, help you publicize it through um, our, uh, our site, which is um, uh, media, uh, mediatalentpool.com. I almost forgot the name of my own URL. Mediatalentpool.com is a great place to, to publicize for uh, people who are out of work. I uh, got a, a question from a producer who says, I'm having trouble convincing my host of a topic or feature that I would like them to do. They're not paying any attention. So how do I get, uh, how do I manage this talent that doesn't pay attention to their own show? Uh, in other words, the producer feels like uh, he or she cares more about this than the talent does. Well, that's a tough one. Uh, the talent has to care. What I would say to producers, or if you're a program director, if you're a manager, if you're a talent coach, if you're anybody who's in charge of trying to inspire performance from personalities, first of all, understand you cannot motivate someone who's not motivated. All you can do is inspire the creativity and the motivation that already exists. All right. So they've got to be self-motivated. Now, if they're motivated and they just don't like your ideas of what you brought to them, look at it like you're trying to sell them the idea and you can't sell somebody something they don't want to buy. So make them want to buy it. Uh, focus on how can I package this? How can I present this? How can I give this to this talent? Uh, how can I show them that this is good for them and make them interested in doing what I think is going to be really good for them? But if they don't want to buy it, don't force them to take it because your idea is not going to work and you're going to get blamed for it. Uh, and you know what? Rightfully so, because if they really don't want to do it, then making them do it is kind of like uh, if you've got kids or remember when you were a kid and you did something only because your teacher made you do it or your parents made you do it. How much effort did you really put into it? You didn't pour your heart and soul into it. And if you're going to go from good to great on your show, you you got to be you got to believe, you know, to channel my inner Ted Lasso. Believe you got to believe in it. I would rather have a personality execute an average idea and believe in it, be all in on it than a personality take a great idea and only be half in. So that's uh, that's that's about the best response I can give you to that. Next question is about voice tracking. Uh, how can I connect with listeners as a voice tracker? Well, first of all, don't think of it as I'm voice tracking. All you're doing is pre-recording a live radio show. That's it. You're just using technology to do a live show. So it really doesn't matter if you're performing live or if you're performing it to voice track. Look at it exactly the same way. No difference. Now, I know it feels different because you don't uh, when you're when you're on live, you don't have that safety net. And there's a little uh, adrenaline rush. There's there's a different feeling when you're on live than when you're voice tracking. But look at it as I'm doing a live radio show that happens to be pre-recorded the same way Jimmy Kimmel does a live television show every night. It happens to be pre-recorded a few hours early. So you connect with listeners in voice tracking the same way you connect with listeners when you're on live. And I know there's a couple of voice trackers that are on the webinar today. I see Lisa Berry and Corey Dillon, who both do amazing voice tracking. Um, and I think they could probably tell you the same thing. So type anything that I've left out there in the chat, uh, uh, Corey and, and, and Lisa. All right, let's get to some of the questions that are in the chat and in the uh, private questions that have come in. And I'm going to scroll back and see what I missed uh, from earlier when I was in the presentation. And the first one is from Al, who says, where is commercial FM music radio in the U.S. today and likely tomorrow? Um, it's going to be relegated to something that is not very attractive, to be honest with you. Um, radio stations that are planning to compete going forward are going to see a shrinking audience pool, shrinking attention, and lower and lower time spent listening, followed by lower and lower cum. And we're already seeing that happen. Uh, wasn't that many years ago, three or four years ago, when 
we radio was bragging about having a 95% reach with uh, their audience. Now we're bragging about having about an 80% reach. And by the way, it's not that high. It's more like 70%. And if you start looking at any demographic under the age of 35, really 40, it's a lot lower than that. So how are you going to come back with commercial music on FM radio and improve that? without changing your business model. Because as technology makes it easier for me to listen to the songs that I curate and design a station specific to my taste without commercials, how are you going to compete playing eight or 10 or 12 or 14 minutes of commercials an hour on music that someone else is choosing for me? It's not gonna work, folks. The only thing that's going to save radio is personality and personalities and personalities who are doing great personalities who are connected to the audience in a unique way that creates a special reason to listen. And as podcasts get, uh, get more and more prevalent and are more and more popular and are promoted better and better and are more and more specific, it's taking away that last advantage that radio has, which is personality. So personality has to save this business. That's why I'm putting so much of what I do into personality development. It's what will save the radio business. And I think that uh, more and more broadcasters are starting to uh, starting to uh, to recognize that. Next question came in uh, about talking too much. How much do lengthy promos after the talk break going into commercials affect the listener experience? Should promos be catchy, short, and to the point, or longer with more trendy lingo and stuff? How do you know if you are over-promoting everything on or about the station? Well, I, that's a whole seminar in itself. So thank you for that question. It's a great one. Um, I'm not going to answer it in too much depth because it'd probably take me 45 minutes to get through all that. But I will uh, address each of the points briefly. Number one is er remember that every time you put a promo on your radio station, a recorded promo, you're running another commercial. It's a commercial for your radio station. And that's how the audience hears it. No matter how good that commercial is, it's a commercial for your radio station. So don't look at it as let's throw a promo on here so it positions our station. Think. I'm going to put a promo on that's a commercial for us. How am I going to invest in that time to communicate an important message or concept about my brand? And if you don't have a great promo that really does one of three things, I'm not going to go through the three things. I did a seminar on this in, I believe it was July, um, which you can get on demand on my website at tjohnsonmediagroup.com. Uh, it goes over how promos should fit on your station, what they should be like, how long they should be. It goes into a lot of these questions. So go and, and, and watch that webinar. But the bottom line is these are commercials. And if, if, if you're running three promos an hour and each promo is 60 seconds long, you've added three minutes of commercials to your commercial inventory. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. I'm just saying that if you, since you're doing that, make sure that they're worthwhile. Um, they do affect the listener experience, and most of the time they affect the listener experience negatively unless the promo is relevant, unless it is entertaining, and unless it connects with them on something that they're already interested in. Kind of like commercials, right? Uh, if you run a commercial for something I'm interested in and it's highly entertaining, it's not nearly as annoying as a commercial that yells at me and tells me I need to change my tires. Uh, because those just become noise. If you try and sell me something that I don't want or I'm not in the market for, not interested in, then that commercial is annoying to me. But if it's a fun, funny commercial about something that I am interested in, it doesn't annoy me. So think about your promos that way. Uh, second part is, should the promo be catchy, short, and to the point, or longer with more trendy lingo and stuff. In the seminar that I did a couple of months ago, I had a promo from The Wolf in Dallas, a great country radio station that has uh, what they call wolf pack promos. And, uh, you know, my, my advice is that promos should be as short as they can be, but no shorter. 
and as long as they need to be, but no longer. And the Wolf promo is longer than most promos I would tolerate, but it wasn't too long. It was over a minute. I think it was a minute and 29 seconds or something like that, a minute and a half. And it was fantastic. It, it communicated an emotion. It communicated a feel. It communicated something about Dallas, about the market that I'm in. It's absolutely terrific. And that whole series of promos is terrific as well. So there's no rule of how long good promos are and how short they need to be. But if they aren't accomplishing the objectives, then no matter how short they are, they're too long. Hopefully, hopefully that helps. We, again, that webinar will give you some more detail, uh, some more insight and some more guidelines. But hopefully that points you uh, in the right direction. Um, next question is, can you share your thoughts regarding the current and future state of commercial FM music radio? Oh, uh, same question that I already uh, already answered. Must have thought I wasn't going to get to it. Uh, next one is some of the challenge you are addressing is hard when you run a solo show for four hours and doing it all by yourself. Finding the motivation every day is hard. Tom, you're right, man. It's a grind. Nobody's saying it's not a grind. This is a hard job. Uh, and, and it's a hard job whether you're doing a solo show or a team show. Um, I'm working with a, a lot of team shows that have four, five, six people on it. It's hard for them, too. It is hard. You're creating four hours of entertainment or th some of you three hours of entertainment every single day. And no matter how great that show is today, you finish that show and you high five and say, man, that was awesome. What are we going to do tomorrow? Start all over again. That's what we signed up for. You got to find that motivation. You got to find the, uh, the the inner drive. You got to find the inspiration to bring it the next day. Uh, you talk to professional athletes. Uh, Major League Baseball is going into the playoffs starting tonight with the Red Sox against the Yankees. And they've just played a 162 game schedule. I don't know if you ever played uh, competitive sports. But if you've played competitive sports and you've done it for, let's say you play two or three games a week, that's a grind for the for a month. Now think about playing every single day and not just 162 games, but there's about 30 preseason games. And those teams who are going to the playoffs are playing another 30 or 35 postseason games. Talking about over 200 competitive games and not just going out having fun games. Uh, just going out and, and playing on Sunday afternoon. This is playing competitively. What it means to be a professional is that you're able to bring your best and bring your A game to every inning of every game, every at bat. Every time you have an opportunity to perform, you're able to get up for it and to bring your best on it. Same thing you face as a radio show. Four hours a day, five days a week, you got to figure out how to bring that internal drive and get excited about the opportunity to influence and connect with your audience in fresh new ways every single day. Now, that's impossible probably for every break on the show. I understand that. Just like it's impossible for a Major League Baseball player to be 100% focused, locked in, and have their best at bat every at bat of a season it doesn't happen that way but you got to go into it with the intent to do that and because as soon as you start looking at it as i can take this break off or this show you know i'm just not feeling it today so i'm just going to get through it you're starting to create a new habit and as that habit starts to develop and you start to accept that i'm not feeling it today and it's okay you start becoming a good or average show and good or average shows aren't going to win. So you got to find that motivation. The, the, the ones, the, those personalities who dominate their market and truly win and are, and are excellent are the ones who finish a show. Can't wait to get out because they're exhausted. It's mentally draining. You know how hard this is. They poured everything they've got into it. And 30 minutes later, they can't wait till tomorrow so they can do it all over again. And, you know, it's, it, that joy is in the hard work. I saw Stephen Colbert uh, the last uh, month or so before he switched over to take David Letterman's place when he was doing the Colbert Report. And 
uh, he came out and answered questions uh, from the audience before he performed that night. And somebody asked him about what they go through in uh, preparing the show each day and, wh and, and what, what's the routine. And he, and he detailed it. He said, you know, we start about nine o'clock in the morning and we have, we have our meetings and the writers and the rewriters. And then we talk about this and we, act, and we cross this out. And he said, it's very intense for all of us to come up with the content for this one hour or maybe it's a 90 minute show. And he said, but by the time we finish it and we all are ready to leave for the day around eight or nine o'clock at night after it's all done and ready to go, there is no better feeling than the joy that we have for doing this hard thing. Find the joy of doing this hard thing. And the joy comes in the process, not in the result. And that, I, I, that, that really spoke to me with, with Stephen Colbert because that happens with me as a talent coach. Um, I was up at 3.30 this morning because I had an early call with a, a client on the East Coast that I had to be prepared for. And I'm in meetings all day here on the West Coast with another client. You know, I love it. I couldn't wait because it's fresh. It's, it's fresh and it's different every day. So find that inner um, inspiration to, to, to bring it every day. Next question is uh, from Dan Danielle. Hi. Hi, Danielle from 91X in San Diego. What do you think about a uh, music news segment? How would you suggest you insert yourself into the break? Uh, first of all, music news segments, uh, you, I think you've got to be really careful with them. Um, again, because if you, uh, if you really look at it on, on most radio stations, I'm not coming to you to get informed about the music and the artists. I'm coming to you for an, an emotional connection. If I care about the music and if I care about the artist, I already know the information you're about to tell me. And if I don't know about it, the information alone probably isn't enough to make me interested. So the question is, what are you going to do with that information to put a perspective through the things we talked about in the seminar today? How are, what are you going to do to put your perspective into it, your point of view into it, and make that information come alive as content? And it's, it, it's putting a perspective on it. So you have to look at every one of those music news segment stories as being a piece of content, just like you might find a human interest story in, in your show prep or you recognize something that's happening in your market. It's exactly the same thing. It's just a piece of content. How am I going to use it to entertain? There are a lot of techniques that you can use to do that. That's a hard thing to do. Because, but you've got to change your perspective from I'm reporting this information because you're interested in receiving the information to I'm interpreting the information to entertain you. Big difference in those two things. It's subtle, but it's everything. It's, it's, it, it, it's really what it's all about. Um, and Danielle, I'm going to see you. I think it's next week or the week after, uh, when we get together and we can talk about that a little bit more and go into some detail, because I think that that is, one of the most important things, you know, a lot of shows think we've got all this information dialed in. We've gathered all the information. We know what uh, what we're going to talk about. We're prepared. And that's also actually where preparation starts. And I want to help you find the, the key to get you to the good side of that preparation. Next question from Blake. Uh, what's your test? Uh, what's your take on news segments? I feel it helps us connect with what's going on. I list a few headlines, but it's loose and conversational, not a news report. We run it at six and seven. Our show is on from five to 10. Do you think we could eliminate it to make room for other topical content? Or is that still an important service element? We eliminated traffic reports years ago. First of all, good on you for eliminating traffic reports. Nobody uses the radio for traffic reports anymore. Unless you are a news talk station that does the news wheel and you build your image and reputation around it, everybody else should take traffic reports off. It's ridiculous. And there's only one reason those traffic reports are still on. And we all know what it is. It's because there are spot carriers that uh, radio stations don't want to lose. So I don't want to go down that rant. It's not what your question was about. Uh, but about news segments, uh, like I, I, I used to recommend to stations to um, get rid of news, too. Because for that same reason that I mentioned already today, uh, if I care about it, I already know. And unless you're a news station, you're not adding anything new to it that gives me perspective. 
I've changed my opinion on that somewhat for some stations. Now, if you do news stations, uh, if you do news on your station, that news has to be in your personality, with your perspective, and with your point of view, and in your character. Otherwise, you're just changing format for three minutes to do a newscast. And it's not why I use you. I've got other places that I go for that. And one of the things that made me change my opinion on it are a couple of stations that I work with. One of them is CHFM in Calgary that does uh, news at the top and bottom of every hour. It's about three minutes long. Um, Billy Joe uh, Ross does the uh, newscast, and she's absolutely spectacular. She doesn't read pre-written copy. She rewrites it in her own voice and delivers it. It reminds me of a, a, the station's AC. Uh, targeted to adult women, and the way she delivers it is like telling me a story about things that I am already interested in. It's almost like uh, the AC version of what Jon Stewart used to do on his show at night. And Jon Stewart became a news source for young people watching Comedy Central. And I feel the same way about that. And so if you really pour your prep into your news segment and you make it stand out, it can be something that is valuable to your show. I think uh, I've got a, a system, I'm going to do a uh, webinar on this in the next few months too. It's called my GIFS system, G-I-F-S. G, uh, and I think every show, every well-rounded show should have uh, elements on it that uh, give you a better chance of connecting with more listeners. One element is, uh, starts with G, uh, it's games. And it could be games, it could be contests, it could be listener interaction, but something that gets the audience actively involved and a, 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 a play along game is a really good way of doing that. I is information. And that's what we're talking about here. That information could be any, anything that causes the audience to recognize that I'm living in the same world you are, that we're connected to what's happening outside of the studio and we're not just talking about ourselves, that we're, that we're not living in a bubble here. Um, one of the rock stations I was listening to this morning has a high profile female personality on it. And it, the last thing you would expect is someone taking on a political issue like the abortion um, controversy that's going on in America right now. She was all over it and it was compelling. It was it was great. Uh, you didn't want to turn that off. And it was absolutely appropriate because she was passionate about it. It was appropriate because she made it appropriate. And it, was a, it wasn't during a news segment. It was a piece of content, but it connected me with what's happening in the listener's world. And that fills that I information. And so how are you going to connect me that make, make sure that, you, that, that I know that you know what's happening in the world? Uh, F is funny. And, you know, some shows are naturally funny. Uh, the best shows have funny things that happen throughout. Uh, some shows aren't naturally funny. But I think you, you know, the, I, I know that the number one reason people listen to most radio stations is to put them in a good mood or to make them laugh. So having funny on the show is really, really important. You need F. And then S is story. Uh, listeners are attracted to stories to find out what's going to happen next and how this is going to turn out. So my gift system is G-I-F-S, game, information, funny, story. I think shows need information on their station. If that comes in a formal news segment, okay, so be it. If it comes from a trending segment where you're talking about what's happening in technology or social media and you're connecting me to the outside world that way, okay, that's fine. Maybe it's a sports report. It could be just about anything, but give me something that lets me know that you're connected to my world. And that means something different for every every show and every station. Um, Corey Dillon uh, from San Diego on Big FM, one of my favorite personalities in radio. Uh, Corey says, uh, for ladies, uh, she maintains a list of women in radio called uh, the Radio Sisterhood. If you want to shoot her a message, and please do, because uh, Corey is one of my resources. Uh, when I need a, a female personality, I call Corey, and she connects me with the right candidates. Uh, she just uh, hooked me up with several that I've been talking to about a couple of positions we have open right now. So yeah, uh, Corey is one of the best people in this business to network with folks. Uh, Lisa Berry, uh, Lisa says, my PD once told me to 
Lisify, uh, that's a great term, Lisify every break. Uh, I love that mantra because it helps me remember to just give the break a little personal flair, especially on those shorter breaks that don't need a lot of extra planning, but need that spark that you were talking about at the beginning. Great stuff, Tracy. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. Lisa is probably the best voice tracker I've ever heard. Uh, you can, yeah, you would think that she's not just in the same market and on the station that you're listening to live. You think Lisa is in the room talking to you. She has, she has this ability and it doesn't happen without effort. It, it happens. It's, it's very deliberate. She has, but she has this ability to make connections and to be very personal uh, with the audience. So yeah, great advice. I love to lisa every break. Uh, terrific. Um, interesting phone talk versus scheduled music. What matters more? Well, uh, interesting talk is always better than scheduled music. Uh, now, the <laughs> there'll be programmers that would argue with that, and they would point to a Nielsen ratings that uh, would show a different result of that. The key is what's interesting. Um, you know, boring talk is not as good as scheduled music. Uh, talk that doesn't interest me isn't better than scheduled music. I'm not sure that uh, having phone talk um, is uh, relevant or not. Is is it entertaining or is it not? Is it interesting or is it not? Is it provocative or is it not? Is it funny or is it not? Does it make me feel something or does it not? If it doesn't make me feel something, if it doesn't connect uh, connect with me personally and emotionally, then it's probably too much talk even if it's very short. And that's why they, you know, that's one of the reasons I, I say that every break matters. If you're not making an impact in every break to make, a, make an attempt or have the potential of really truly connecting with listeners, then you're talking too much and you would be better off playing a song. But if you are making a connection with listeners, if you are creating an emotional response, that's something that no song can give you and nothing can compete with it. Because whatever song you could be playing, whether it's a Dustin Lynch song or a um, Justin Bieber song, I can get that song a lot of other places. I can get it any place. But I can't find someone who makes me feel the way that you feel if you're really making me feel something. Okay? Uh, awesome. Um can you discuss listener interaction, uh, voice, uh, phone calls in a voice track show? Uh, Dave, you know, look, I love phone calls on the air. Uh, and I've got a uh, ebook on my website at tjohnsonmediagroup.com about how to get more out of your phone calls. But I hear a lot of shows that are putting phone calls on just to have a phone call on. It's like bringing a co-host on just to have someone else to say something. There's got to be a purpose for it. There's got to be a reason for it. And I love you know, whether it's voice track shows or live shows makes no difference to me. doesn't matter. I love hearing interaction and I love hearing conversation and I love hearing another voice that brings out more character, and more personality in the host that is doing the show. So it doesn't, you know, the, uh, you know, part of your question frustrates me and this isn't a criticism of you at all, but discuss listener interaction phone calls in a voice track show. What difference does it make if it's voice tracked or not? The best phone calls are probably going to be calls that you set up or you record in advance, or it's a voice actor, or it's edited from a call that you got yesterday or last night, or it's someone that you connected with on Facebook over the topic that you were setting up and you invited them to record a phone call with you. It's not going to be those calls that come up spontaneously and we throw them on the air. So look at it a little bit differently. You might have to work a little bit harder to get those phone calls on a voice track show. If you're depending on how far in advance you're recording, but you can do it. it just takes a little bit more uh, time, a little extra 10% effort, a little more pre-planning, a little more preparation. Got to do whatever you have to do in order to have an entertaining show. Uh, and Lisa chimes in again about voice trackers who want phone calls on their show. Mike Couchman has a phone swap on Facebook and Dropbox where people submit phone calls that trackers can download and use on their show. Also recommend that you uh, form networks. Form networks with the people you see in this uh, webinar. 
say, hey, anybody want to be part of my phone network where we can be guests and uh, do phone, do voices on each other's shows? Start your own network of people. Use mics, absolutely, and then start your own. There's also a Facebook group. Uh, I talked about radio peeps before. Uh, you can get people who will be voice actors uh, from, uh, from, from that with it as well. Uh, hello from Australia, from Kate. Hi, Kate. Good day. Uh, how do you tackle two hosts, one highly motivated, one barely? <laughs> Worked on them individually. Um, look, I, I think that uh, whether you're a producer or a manager, program director, talent coach, whatever, you can't treat everybody the same. Some personalities, uh, and, and then this is what part of what makes my job so interesting, dealing with so many different types of personalities. Some uh, are hungry for every piece of information you can give them and they want to be absolutely beaten up. Tell me everything that's wrong because I can fix it if I know that it's wrong. And there's others that are really, really sensitive and they can't take it. They think you hate them if you're telling them how they can be better. So you have to treat them differently. Um, and uh, yeah, if somebody is, is barely motivated, um, like as, as a manager, someone who's barely motivated and is barely doing what it takes to succeed. I think you give them every opportunity to improve, but I think you also weigh the attitude versus the value that they bring to the show. Are they good enough and are they important enough? Do they bring enough value to make the attitude worth it? And if they don't find somebody who does, but if they do, do everything you can to inspire whatever motivation that you can find and realize that it's all about the show itself. Uh, what's, the, what's the net result of the show? Um, I, I work with, uh, with a show right now that has uh, an improv artist who is absolutely terrific at responding. You can say anything to this person and they will have something to say. It'll move the conversation forward and they're absolutely terrific. The co-host is a workaholic, is an over-prepper. Um, the way that we've set the show up is the, 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 the person who's such a good responder basically comes in and does the show and leaves because we don't want that person knowing too much about what's going to be happening because they're so good being surprised, reacting spontaneously. So if you look at the amount of time that's spent promote, uh, um, preparing and executing the show, it's really not fair. And you could say that one is more committed and dedicated to the other, but that's also not fair. It's just that they're very different people and they bring something very different to the show. I call it an FTS mentality, for the show mentality. What does it take for the show to succeed? And that might be something different. The quarterback, Tom Brady, the quarterback on the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, spends a lot more time in preparation and game film and going over plays and designing the playbook than the left tackle. Left tackle doesn't have as many things he has to process or have as many things to do. Is that fair? Well, maybe, maybe not. And, and from, from different, it depends on which angle you look at it from. Tom Brady's not complaining that he works harder than the left tackle because they bring something different to the team. So how are you getting, what's the net result is, is what you uh, should, should really be asking yourself. Dave says, um, if you can't change your people, maybe you should change your people. Yeah, right. Uh, I, I agree. Again, it comes down to, um, I, I used to call it the PETA factor. Uh, when I was managing stations, uh, the, the PETA factor is how much of a pain in the ass are you willing to uh, put up with? And some put up with a lot, others, not so much. That's why you need to be a great show, by the way. The greater show that you are, the more of a pain in the ass you can be <laughs> because, because you bring that value. Uh, should newscasts include jock commentary? Uh, uh, TJ, there's no way I can answer that. Uh, maybe. It depends. It depends on what, it depends on so many things. Your, it depends on your format. It depends on your station brand. It depends on the audience expectation. It depends on the personalities. It depends on where you're at in the relationship between the personalities and the audience. It depends on the audience expectation. It depends on what your perspective is and your point of view. Um, you know, some stations should not do newscasts. Some stations should do formal newscasts. Some stations should do very loose, just, totally conversational uh, conversations about the news. 
I've got one station that doesn't do news at all, but they do a news quiz where they deliver the news through an interactive game with contestants and they make it fun and funny and they educate the audience at the same time. It's appropriate for them. So uh, like every show has a different recipe. There's no one size fits all where you can give advice. And you know, that, that's what keeps me in business, by the way. Uh, if there was one set, if there was one formula that worked for every show, you could take that formula and put it on, but that doesn't work for everybody. It's different because of the, of the people that are on and it has to be customized. Uh, Mike says, how do you walk the line of standing out and bringing attention to yourself when your format is in office, relaxing favorites at work? Uh, I, I look at this, Mike, as uh, Russian nesting dolls. I'm not sure if you know the, those children's toys there where the, it starts with a very small figurine. And then you uh, around that is a larger version of the same thing and it gets bigger and bigger. So at the, at the end, you've got a large statue and you open the top and you take out a smaller version of the same thing all the way down to the bottom. I look at radio stations the same way. You start with the station brand. What's the station brand represent? That's the largest of the nesting dolls. But when you open the station brand, there's a radio show inside of it. It has to be similar to and fit with the brand. Now, inside the radio show, you've got personalities. Each personality has to fit inside the show, which already fits inside the brand. Now, inside the personalities are what the personalities do, the features, you know, whether they do news or not, uh, all of these things, and how they do it. How they do it has to fit the personality, which has to fit the show, which has to fit the station. So it doesn't change the formula. The formula is pouring yourself into your person, you're know, pouring your personality into your content, but it means something different depending on what your station is for and what the personality brand of your station is. Now, I think that a lot of stations that are the soft, relaxing favorites, and I'm working with uh, five of those stations right now, and in three of those stations, we're making a concentrated effort to leverage the popularity that the station has after 10 o'clock, before 10 o'clock. Because as you know, with most of those stations, we're the one that everyone at work can agree on. We're relaxing favorites at work, and it's long time spent listening in the workday. And you're not going to do anything as a brand to get in the way of that value proposition. But what if we can leverage that? and sell that audience on using the radio station in the morning. Well, how are we gonna do that? Well, we're not gonna do it with the same collection of music because they use the radio differently in the morning. So that comes through personalities. And we do it very carefully where we establish personality that fits and is complementary to the station brand. And, we, but, and then we stretch and we expand. And it takes a while, but it really, really works because you've got such a solid base to start with. Uh, so I would not, you know, Mike, I, if I were you, uh, I don't know if you're a program director or a personality, but uh, regardless of what you are, don't flip a switch and start being something that doesn't fit with the value proposition that the station offers the audience. But you can change the value proposition over a period of time by focusing on personality, if that makes sense. Um Couple of uh, more conversations here about uh, Photoshop. Uh, Dave says you are correct, guys. To uh, Facebook Messenger voice messages are so yeah, they're awesome. I, I forgot about that, but yeah, you're right. Use Facebook Messenger voice messages to um, uh, get on your show. That's that's fantastic. Um, John Izzo has a video on the 100-0 principle for the PIA folks. Good teaching tool. Uh, thank you, Dave. I'll check that out. Um, let me see if there are any other questions. Um, there's one other place I need to check. Uh, 